The science of sprinting is constantly evolving and athletes today have access to more technology to aid their performance than ever before. Comparing athletes across eras happens in every sport, but in athletics, these comparisons are made easier by the fact that the time shown on the clock will mean the same thing in any era. What changes is how impressive it is, given the standard of competition in that era, as well as the technology that was available at the time. In this video, we'll be taking a look at nine 100 meter world record holders from the 20th century and speculating on how fast they could run if they are competing in their prime in 2023. Bob Hayes ran a time of 10 seconds flat in the 1964 Olympic final which equaled the world record at the time, which was set by Armin Harry in Zurich in 1960. Bob Hayes was widely recognized as one of the greatest athletes in the history of sprinting, with his anchor leg performances in the 4x100 meters also adding to his legendary status. When Hayes competed, he ran on cinder tracks, so had he continued his athletic career for a few more years, it would have been interesting to see what he could have ran on a synthetic track with fully automatic timing but he chose not to pursue his track career any further after he began playing in the NFL. If 1964 Bob Hayes could run a 100m race today, I think he would be 0.16 seconds faster thanks to modern tracks, 0.08 seconds faster due to modern spikes, and 0.04 seconds faster due to the additional knowledge on sprinting mechanics that's available today. Hayes' unorthodox form worked for him, but there's potential that a few tweaks to his start, and also adding a drive phase, would have made him marginally faster. This would give him a time of 9.72 if he competed today, and some might even consider this a modest estimate since it's not considering other variables like improvements in training methods, recovery methods, and nutritional knowledge, which are harder to estimate for. Since I applied this improvement estimate to Bob Hayes, it's fair that the same improvement could be applied to Armin Harry since he also ran on cinder tracks using similar footwear. But since Harry already had an efficient running style that was ahead of its time, I think the improvements he would make to his form in the current day would be less significant than Hayes, so it will perhaps just give him an improvement of 0.02. Harry had possibly the best start among athletes of his era, thanks to a lightning reaction time and gradual transition to upright running, as well as a loose and relaxed style of running at top speed. I think that many people would expect there to be a substantial gulf in speed between Bob Hayes and Armin Harry, but I'm interested to hear what you think in the comments. The first athlete in this video who ran his personal best under fully automatic timing that I'm going to highlight is Jim Hines. Hines ran a time of 9.95 in the 100m final in Mexico in 1968 and it was the first time a major athletics event was held on a synthetic track. I estimate the earliest synthetic tracks to be halfway between the cinder tracks and the modern super tracks so I give Hayes 0.08 seconds to run on a modern track and also 0.08 seconds using current spikes. Since Hines' form and race execution has no bearing flaws, I estimate that changes to his form will give him an improvement of 0.02. This will give Hines a time of 9.77 in 2023. Calvin Smith broke the world record by running a time of 9.93 in 1983. The track surfaces and spikes in the early 80s will have improved slightly from the late 60s, and I expect Smith had some minor benefits in technology compared to Hines. So if Smith was to run in modern times, I'd give him 0.06 for the track surface and 0.06 for the spikes as well. Smith had a unique running style where he tilted his head back and swung his arms up high while rotating his body slightly, which could be considered as wasted movement. Smith was a smaller sprinter and not overly explosive, but I think that some adjustments to his form will give him another 0.03 seconds. I believe Smith had the raw talent that would allow him to run a time of 9.78 in 2023. Ben Johnson broke the world record in consecutive years in 1987 and 1988, with times that seemed inconceivable before he showed what could be done. Johnson won the Olympic final in 88 with a time of 9.79, with a huge margin of victory over Carl Lewis, who took the silver with a time of 9.92, which ranked him as the second fastest man ever at the time. Johnson used his level of dominance over the sprinters in his era to claim that he could run 9.3 if he ran with the technology available to sprinters in 2012. Uh, we know that over the last, you know, 24 years, technology has changed. You got better running shoes, you got faster track, and with the force that I generate and speed that I generate, those guys don't no match for me. So if I was running in this day, in this time, you're talking about a 9.3. 9.3, you reckon? 9.3, you reckon you could knock off, which that's beating this time by 10 meters? Yeah, but you see, you have to talk about technology. Technology is very, very... Yeah, you strap a rocket to you, I reckon you got 9.3, do you reckon? But, I find this claim to be way too over the top for most people to take seriously, but maybe he would have convinced people had he suggested a time in the 9.5s. If he ran today, I would give him 0.05 for the track surface, 0.05 for the spikes, and also 0.02 for changes in race execution, because he went straight into upright running almost immediately, 
whereas a dry phase could have helped him to reduce deceleration that he suffered in the latter part of his races. This will leave Johnson with a time of 9.67, which will make him the second fastest man ever based on current rankings. Since Johnson's record was rescinded, Carl Lewis became the world record holder before losing it to Leroy Burrell, then regaining it again in 1991 with a time of 9.86 in the World Championship final. Like Johnson, I would give Lewis 0 0.05 for the track and 0 0.05 for the spikes if he raced today, as well as 0 0.03 for improvements to race execution because his start was sometimes the worst among all of the athletes in the field. Lewis came up out of his blocks very high and never performed the low heel recovery method that is common for sprinters of the 2000s. His first 60 meters in his world record race was 6.46 and I think he could easily shave 0 0.03 from that if he stayed lower when coming out of his blocks and took longer to transition to fully upright running. Lewis never cut his steps short in the early part of the race so he always built up momentum to ensure he was running at top speed as close to the finish line as possible but if he had a better exit from the blocks I think he would execute his race pattern similar to Marcel Jacobs when Jacobs won at the Olympics. I estimate that Lewis would run a time of 9.73 in 2023. The man who broke Lewis's world record was Leroy Burrell who ran 9.85 in Lausanne in 1994. I'd give Burrell 0 0.04 for track surface and 0 0.04 for spikes along with 0 0.03 for form improvements if he was to run in his prime today. Burrell was a powerful runner but his form was a bit chaotic so I expect that running with more efficiency would have improved Burrell's potential time and I estimate that he could run 9.74 today with the other factors considered. Burrell's record was broken by Donovan Bailey at the 1996 Olympics and with the multiple world record and Olympic records broken in the sprint events at those games, the Atlanta track was arguably the best surface the world had seen at the time. I'd give Bailey 0 0.03 seconds if he was to run on modern tracks compared to the Atlanta track and I also give him 0 0.04 for the spikes since footwear released for the 96 Olympics were getting closer to the point of diminishing returns in technology improvement. Bailey wasn't a great starter and I don't know how much of an improvement he could make to this with modern sprint knowledge but I think he definitely could have improved his leg cycle to run with better form which may have given him another 0.02 seconds. I estimate that Bailey could run a time of 9.75 in 2023. Maurice Green is the final sprinter on this list and by all metrics he is the closest thing we see to a modern sprinter among athletes who raced in the 20th century. Green broke the world record in 1999, running a time 9.79 in Greece and like Bailey I'd give him 0 0.03 for track surface and 0 0.03 for spikes. Since Green was one of the pioneers of using the drive phase and was exceptional in every segment of the race, I don't think there's anything he would have done to improve his form in 2023 so I give him an estimate time of 9.73 in 2023. I know people might consider this to be a modest time since many think he could have ran that time or faster if he didn't get injured in the World Championship final in 2001 but if we were just going off the times he did manage to run then I think it's a reasonable estimate. Another point that's debatable is how much faster the super spikes first released by Nike before the Tokyo Olympics are making current sprinters. My estimate assumes that it improves speed by 0 0.03 compared to the track spikes used when Morris Green was competing. Some athletes will say it can improve speed by more than that compared to standard spikes on the market today. But with multiple athletes dropping 9.7s while representing brands that hadn't released super spikes, it's hard to tell how much exactly they help to improve speed. When it comes to the track surface, I think we have seen the tracks in Tokyo on Hayward Field contribute to athletes running faster times than usual but you could also put it down to having an exceptional pool of athletes competing at the moment, as well as the fact of athletes peaking for the major competitions. If Bolt had run his 2009 world record on the Hayward Field Super Track in current super spikes, I think he runs 9.52, which is an improvement of 0 0.06, the same I gave to Maurice Green, since I don't think technology around tracks and spikes has improved that significantly during that 10 year span. If we took the athletes from the past that I'd mentioned in this video and had them race against each other with all of them taking advantage of modern technology, it's an interesting question to ask who would win. Just for fun, I decide to adjust all of the athletes personal best for wind and altitude, then subtract the time for track surface, spikes and form improvement that I had calculated earlier. I then set a time handicap on the athletes who would be drawn into the outside lanes and did a fully random lane draw and these were the lane assignments. I then separated the athletes into powerful sprinters and top speed sprinters with the powerful sprinters having more of an advantage with a headwind and the top speed sprinters having more of an advantage with a tailwind. I then randomized the wind conditions and got a result of a 1.5 tailwind which gives a time improvement to all athletes in the field but gives an extra advantage to the top speed sprinters. 
We then see that the athlete who's left with the fastest time and is therefore the winner of the fantasy race is Ben Johnson. Who do you think will be the fastest athlete from the past with modern technology? Leave your thoughts in the comments and thanks for watching.